Welcome to Storytime 52. Uh, today we have a kind of sporting theme and we've got lots of people dressed ready to be enthusiastic but kind of clueless sports supporters. Uh, we, uh, we also had a variety of other themes, so our topics today were people not filling out forms correctly, uh, when they don't read the details or instructions, filling in forms that are terrible forms, uh, personality tests, resistant materials such as paper that won't fold, taking yeah. slips or cuttings from plants, giving detailed directions, and when you give directions based on things only you know about, clueless but enthusiastic sporting audiences, people who are at a sports event or exercise activity for reasons other than watching or taking part, and children finding things that are more fun to do than the expensive or long-awaited activity, such as playing with the box uh, you know, equivalent. Our little introductory poem today is called Directions. Go forward until you feel as though there might be a wall. Wallow a while in the stream until you see a lazy lizard and jump out of your skin at the shiny scales. Go the way where you get delightfully dusty and dig your fingernails into the dirt, finding fine roots and feathered fungi and collect seeds. Take the seeds and shiny stones to somewhere on a road more traveled and follow the crowd a little while until it feels too claustrophobic. Get sent away from the fancy restaurant for still filthy fingernails and find instead mm -hmm. the hot chips of life and take them to the seaside seats where the gulls clamour to steal them and look underneath the wind-worn wood for secrets only the whimsical can find. Oh, yeah. mm. nice. Today's story is called That's Not Sporting. Reg glanced furtively about him, then turned down the speed on his treadmill and dug in his pocket for the delicious dark chocolate and sea salt nut bar snack he had procured from the gym coffee shop. A movement by the door made him jump guiltily, and he quickly tucked the bar back into his bike shorts. Morning, Reg, called a cheerful voice. Reg relaxed and grinned. Andre, how was the dinner party? Andre came over and sat on the rowing machine while Reg began devouring his snack. Ugh, dramatic Reg is what it was. Anton's sister-in-law. Peanut butter, hissed Reg, seeing personal trainer Jeremy through the long hallway window. Andre stopped talking about the dinner party, grabbed a dumbbell from the corner and started doing curls. Have you tried the strawberry? He asked Reg, as though continuing a prior conversation. Tastes terrible, but did wonders for my pecs. Mmm, replied Reg non-committally, turning his head away so that Jeremy, the personal trainer, would not be distracted from Andre's attempt at an impressive workout by his very full mouthful of chocolate bar. Jeremy, however, did not come into the studio, but went on down the hallway in the direction of the pool. Andre stopped doing curls immediately and sat back down, rubbing his bicep. Are you nearly finished with your run? He asked Reg. We could get juices from the cafe and I can tell you what happened at the party. Reg didn't need to be invited twice. Casey was with her aunt Nell in the backyard, collecting some flowers for her gran. Auntie Nell, she began, placing a small stack of daisies into a basket. Can we go to a cricket game? Her aunt looked a bit surprised at this, frowning as she snipped at the lavender stems. Well, maybe, she answered, glancing over her shoulder at the child. The tickets are quite expensive, I think. I didn't know you were interested in cricket. Casey paused, concentrating on extracting a rosebud without getting pricked. Once the rose was safely added to the flower collection, she shrugged. My friend Florrie at school went to one and she said it was cool. Nell thought about this, still a bit confused as to where the request was coming from. Well, Uncle Vic's advertising company 
sometimes do things at the cricket, she remembered. Perhaps you could ask him to take you along if he gets to go to a game. Casey nodded, satisfied with this. Uncle Vic was a family friend who on more than one previous occasion had got family members free samples of things, tickets or vouchers to try stuff. He and his partner Reg were also fun to be around due to having what some other people considered too much enthusiasm for everything. Casey considered most adults and some other children's levels of enthusiasm far too low and thus found Uncle Vic and Reg much more enjoyable company than most. Casey was therefore quite surprised when she asked Uncle Vic about cricket games the following Sunday at family pizza night. Vic said, why on earth do you want to go to the cricket? It's endless and they spend an awful lot of time having tea. Cricket's one activity I find difficult to muster any enthusiasm for, Casey. You spend an awful lot of time having tea, Casey objected. Yes, replied Vic, but I don't try to pretend I'm doing sport at the same time, do I? Casey thought Uncle Reg looked a bit sheepish for some reason when Uncle Vic said this. Do you like cricket, Uncle Reg? She guessed. It's all right, Reg replied. I don't know much about it. I've seen people do some fun dress ups to go and watch though. <laughs> The following Monday, at work, Vic found Trudy from finance looking despairingly at some contracts. Look at these budgets, she complained. We can't even run a week of ads for this, let alone film or record anything. Vic peered over her shoulder. Can we get some billboards? Trudy did some quick hand calculations. Maybe if the graphic design team can create an image in less than two hours of their time, can we give some influencers free samples? Trudy nodded. That's a good idea. She thought for a moment. Perhaps we can get in on some events that are being broadcast anyway and send our influencers to do some product placement. They'd probably charge us for our time then though. She chewed her pen. We could always just send some of our own team who look good on camera, Vic suggested, flashing a grin. Trudy ignored Vic's modelling face, but opened the local event listings nonetheless. Let's see what's on. Oh, there's the cricket. Vic gave a slow nod, looking conflicted. That would work well. It goes for ages and they always show the crowd a lot since the game is so slow. <laughs> Trudy, who liked cricket, didn't think it was fair to just pick someone to go so she asked HR to come up with a survey. Her idea was that it would act as a sort of personality test, identifying who would be best at behaving candidly in the crowd, even if they actually knew they might be on TV. <laughs> HR got to work right away, and the next day, all the staff found surveys on their desks. Vic enthusiastically grabbed his. Despite the attitude to cricket that he'd expressed to young Casey, he felt differently and rather more strongly about the opportunity to be on TV. He could dress up for the occasion. People might even remember him for his excellent dress sense. The first issue that he had with the survey, unfortunately, arose before he'd even opened it. Trudy had diligently placed all the surveys into stiff cardboard envelopes and printed them out on cheap, thin paper. Vic wasn't sure how she'd got the pages to slide into the stiff envelopes, but he was finding them almost impossible to extract again. The envelope, which was made of tough, bend-resistant card, wouldn't open wide enough for him to slide his hand inside, and he couldn't bend it open to expose the edge of the pages either. The pages within were adhered to the thick cardboard with static and too thin to pull by the top without tearing. Vic sighed and tried to tear the envelope instead, but the cardboard wouldn't budge and his hand slipped free, hitting him in the nose. Does anyone have scissors? 
he called to his colleagues. Standing up, however, he could see that everyone else was having the same problem. And there was therefore already a queue for the one pair of scissors in the office. Some minutes later, Vic finally got the survey onto his desk and carefully printed his name into the relevant box and turned to the first question. What is your opinion of cricket? A, I enjoy it. B, I am not interested in it. Vic frowned. Well, that's not relevant, he complained. If I answer honestly, it will look like I don't want to go. What if I want to go for a reason other than enjoying cricket? He thought for a moment, then drew a third tick box at the bottom and wrote, C, I don't enjoy the game, but I am interested in cricket events. <laughs> Satisfied, he moved on to the next question. If I am on camera, I will. A, try not to show my face. B, try to behave in an entertaining way. C, continue whatever I was doing. Smile, for heaven's sake, why isn't smile an option? Vic once again added an extra tick box. <laughs> what is more true of you? A, you like to try new products and activities. B, you prefer to stick to your favourites. It depends, yelled Vic, alarming some of his colleagues, who seemed to be having far less difficulty answering the questions than he was. After quite a bit more of this, Vic finally reached the end of the survey. Written at the bottom was the instruction, please return your survey sealed inside the original envelope. <laughs> Surveys returned folded or with the name showing will not be considered. <laughs> Vic looked around the room at the envelopes, which were in various states of destruction due to the need to cut them open. <laughs> I think they're going to need to waive that requirement, he commented, tearing off the ID number stuck to the outside of his. His colleagues followed suit and dug about in their desks for alternative survey receptacles. On Wednesday, Vic and his colleagues arrived at work to find a very cross Trudy surrounded at her desk by their completed surveys. <laughs> what are these, she demanded. Can no one follow instructions? The colleagues glanced at one another. Trudy brandished an example page, pointing at some big lettering at the top that Vic had to admit he hadn't read. Only valid if the video release on reverse is signed, Trudy read. Did any of you sign the back? The team looked guilty. And how am I supposed to score these based on which options you all ticked when some people ticked options that aren't supposed to be there? <laughs> Trudy gave Vic a particularly cross glance. Doesn't my filling it out wrong tell you all you need to know about my personality? Vic tried, giving his best cheeky grin. I think it tells her all she needs to know about the quality of the survey, muttered <laughs> one of his colleagues beside him. Some of you didn't even fill in your name, Trudy continued, refusing to be put off her rant. And this person who wrote Big Bird may be less amused when they realise their name can't even be put in the hat that I'm going to have to draw someone out of now that the test is completely useless. You could have just told us all to do the MBTI online and asked whose ideal professions included model or actor, someone suggested. <laughs> Those personality tests are boulder dash, remarked Trudy. <laughs> Vic looked at her with raised eyebrows. And you thought HR could make a better one? On Thursday, there was a note on Vic's desk saying that his name had been randomly drawn to be in the cricket renter crowd, and he could select up to three friends or family members to join him. This was, of course, very exciting news to Casey. I thought you didn't like the cricket, Uncle Vic, she said, while bouncing up and down the lounge room on a large inflatable ball and beaming. He doesn't, Reg clarified. He likes getting on TV. Casey fell off the ball onto the couch. Makes sense, she remarked. 
but everybody's going to have to look as though they like the cricket for the TV, okay? Vic warned. Saturday dawned, mild and sunny with a light breeze. Perfect for cricket, not so good for Casey's hay fever. Vic and Reg had the windows down in the car on the way to the grounds and Casey sneezed 26 times and rubbed her eyes the whole way. The result was that she looked both snotty and puffy upon arrival. Casey, being quite used to hay fever at this time of year and very excited to finally be going to a cricket game, was not especially bothered. Vic and Reg, who had dressed up in their very best outfits and taken a great deal of time preparing to be on TV, looked at her in dismay. Lucky one of the products is sunglasses, Vic remarked, digging in a large shoulder bag for tissues. Everybody keep an eye out for the tree that looks confused, Casey instructed, ignoring him. What, asked Reg. The tree that looks confused. My friend Flory at school said there's this tree on some grass in the grounds and it sort of looks confused. And if I can find it, there's a butterfly bush by it, which has sunset colored flowers, which is the sort that Gran wants. Vic, who was not really listening to Casey, didn't question this, but announced, right, we have to follow Trudy's directions to sit in the right seats. He pulled out a piece of paper from his shoulder bag. Let's see. Stand in line with the north end of the crease. Oh, damn it, Trudy. Which way is north, Reg? That way, Reg replied, pointing confidently. But what's the crease? The brown ball bit, silly, answered Casey, pointing. They made their way to stand at the north end and stood parallel to the line on the pitch as though lining up to start a race. Move back in line with leg slip, Vic read. <laughs> oh, come on. Surely she doesn't actually think I know about cricket. He waved down a man with a lanyard. Excuse me, can you translate this? The man pointed out the position on the field, cold leg slip, giving Vic an unimpressed look. Right. Now she wants us to go up the nearest set of steps to the 12th row and turn right. The three of them made their way up into the stand. Now to the middle of the row and look for the blue seats. They sidled along saying, excuse me, excuse me, over and over. <laughs> Is this blue? Reg pointed to an almost black section of seats. Comes the cat. I mean, a person with any nuance in their description of colours would have said navy, but hopefully this is what she meant by blue, scoffed Vic. Right, so there are set times we have to be sitting here and we'll either be wearing the sunglasses or holding this new soft drink. He extracted some bottles of bright blue fizzy stuff from his bag. He looked at Casey. You can wear the sunglasses in the drink shops too, Case. Casey gave him a curious look. Okay, but I don't think they'll fit my face. <laughs> Vic started searching in his bag for things that might help hold the sunglasses up. Now, we're supposed to blend in with the other cricket fans, he reminded them. So we have to cheer and look at the field and seem interested when we're sitting up here, okay? We know when Trudy wants us to be in our seats, but we don't know for sure when the camera's on us. So we've got to keep up the energy. He put on a pair of the glasses and did a few poses and Casey laughed. Mm, Reg murmured, trying on another pair. You said these were glare resistant, not vision resistant. I can't see anything with these on, it's so dark. Vic tried to do a looking over his shoulder pose, lost his balance and fell down into a seat. Me neither, he announced. Oh, well, they look cool. Quite soon, the game started. Vic watched Casey, expecting her to be excited, but he thought she seemed a bit underwhelmed. He supposed that might be because of the hay fever. He'd helped her to make a bandana headband that would hold the sunglasses on, and Casey mm -hmm. now looked as though she was in disguise. Wow, he threw that one fast, yelled Reg, clapping for the bowler. 
Hit it, Rick joined in. Hooray, he did hit it. Oh, it didn't go very far though. That's bad, right? Reg smiled and clapped anyway, just in case they were on TV. Casey sneezed. When they have tea, can we go and find the tree that looks confused? She asked, <laughs> hopefully. Sure, replied Vic, clinking blue fizzy drink bottles with Reg. Where do you think it is? Casey got a small notebook with cats and sunflowers on the cover out of her backpack, opening it to show a page that looked a bit like a treasure map, if a treasure map had no roads, rivers, or indication of which way it should be oriented. <laughs> Flurry said that I have to find where it smells like hot dogs. So first of all, we need to walk around and use our noses, she declared. Vic eyed her a bit sceptically. Casey's friend's directions sounded even harder to follow than Trudy's had been. Reg, however, was beginning to run out of vocabulary for cheering on the players. Yay, the ball, he offered. <laughs> then he said, sounds like a scavenger hunt. I love those. This made Vic reconsider. Oh, yes, me too, he smiled. So when the players stopped and wandered away from the pitch, Vic, Reg and Casey set off on a circuit of the grounds, sniffing the air for anything resembling hot dogs. This sniffing out took them around to the far side of the field where Vic froze in place. Stop, is that it? His nose wriggled up and down dramatically like a rabbit's. Casey sniffed. Wait a minute. She got out a tissue and blew her nose several times, then sniffed again. Yes, that's definitely hot dogs. Well done, Uncle Vic. Reg was getting into it. What's next? He asked, raising and lowering himself on his toes excitedly. Walk uphill, Casey directed. Uphill? Vic looked around. I guess that means go up here? He pointed at the grassy slope rising on their left. They all trudged up the grass dodging rolling objects and picnicking families. Stop when there are rocks, Casey added. Reg pointed up ahead where a section of garden was bounded by a rockery. The three of them puffed their way toward the stone-lined border. Follow the stones towards the noisy speaker. Casey stopped and frowned. I'm not sure. Vic listened carefully. I think the music's coming from this side. He nodded to the right, and they all followed the edge of the rockery in that direction. Count 10 rocks, Casey commanded, pointing to the large stones bordering the grass as they passed. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Look for the tree. All three of them looked towards a group of three trees on their right. Oh, it does look confused, exclaimed <laughs> Reg delightedly, pulling out a small black plastic camera and fiddling with the settings. The middle of the three trees had two branches midway up the trunk that resembled arms held in a spread hands gesture. An arrangement of knots in the trunk made it seem to have a face with a small frown and a quizzical mouth. Casey's eyes were searching along the fence line. Aha! She ran over to a plant with flowers in bunches, drooping like fluffy sunset-coloured windsocks. Butterfly bush, she announced, kneeling on the grass and rummaging in her bag. What are you going to do, Casey? Vic asked, feeling a bit concerned. Get a slip for Gran, of course. <laughs> Casey pulled out some scissors and a little paper bag. She tipped water from her drink bottle onto one of her few unused tissues, stood up, cut a piece off of the plant and secreted it quickly in the bag, the cut stem wrapped neatly in the tissue. Vic blinked. It had all happened very fast. He wasn't sure whether he was supposed to have stopped Casey from stealing pieces of the cricket ground flora. But then he supposed children probably broke bits off of the plants around here quite often with much less care than Casey had just taken. Casey, he said, in a firm but reasonable voice, 
is this the real reason you wanted to come to a cricket game? Casey shrugged. One of the reasons. <laughs> what else was a reason, Vic inquired. I want to get the pineapple fritter. <laughs> Reg finished photographing the tree that looked confused and turned around. What? Flory said the cricket ground is where you get a pineapple fritter and they're really yum. Casey clarified. Can we look in the canteen on our way back to our seats? Casey, Vic began carefully, turning back down the grassy slope. You do know that you can get pineapple fritters at most chip shops, don't you? Casey's eyes widened. Really? So I didn't have to watch cricket to get one? She shrugged. Oh, well, if I like it, I can get more from the chip shop then. So that sounds good. The three of them made their way back around the ground towards their seats, stopping on the way to obtain Casey's pineapple fritter. Soon they were sitting back in the blue seats that were definitely navy, Casey holding a box with the battered bit of pineapple in it on her lap. Hit the ball, Reg encouraged the batsman. <laughs> oh dear, he hasn't hit it. Oh yes, he has. He hit it hard. Good hitting. <laughs> One of the fielders gave the batsman quite an ugly look and some cross words seemed to be being exchanged with the umpire. Oh, that's just not sporting, complained another spectator in front of them. Bad sporting, Casey chimed in, picking up on the phrase. She picked up the pineapple fritter and took a big bite. Casey warned Vic, don't have your mouth too full on the TV. Casey made a gagging noise, screwed up her face, and unceremoniously spat the pineapple fritter back into the box. Then she sneezed, and another small piece of fritter went flying into the hair of the spectator in front. <laughs> Casey, hissed Vic, put that in the bin immediately. Yuck, spat Casey. Flory <laughs> was wrong about that. <laughs> Reg handed Casey one of the bottles of blue soft drink to rinse away the fritter flavour, and Casey took it whilst continuing to look utterly disgusted. Vic, caught in the middle, took a big sip of his bottle of blue drink and tried to look delighted about it. Casey climbed over him and took the box containing the remainder of the pineapple fritter to the bin. Once there, she tried to crush the box so that it would fit through the bin opening. The material that the box was made of, however, seemed to be resistant to being squashed. So Casey did what she would have done with a can, putting the box on the ground and stamping on it. <laughs> the box still didn't crush, but flew out from under her foot and went skidding off under some other people's seats. Casey made as if to crawl after it, and Reg made vigorous, no, sit down, motions <laughs> at her. Though she kept trying to see where the box had gone for quite a while, Casey eventually came back to her seat and sipped the blue drink, muttering about Reg making her a litterer. Reg tried his best to make up for Casey's potential disgruntlement on camera by being extra enthusiastic himself. Having just started, however, one of the periods when they'd been asked to put on the sunglasses, he couldn't actually see what the cricketers were doing. Get it, he shouted, clapping his hands. This, he figured, could equally be said to either team. Try hard. Go for the ball. <laughs> Running out of options, he decided to push the sunglasses onto his head. That still counted as wearing them, right? Yeah, chuck it fast. The spectator in front, who'd been hit by Casey's flying piece of fritter previously, turned around in his seat. The South Aussies are batting, mate, he told Reg, rolling his eyes. Oh, Reg, Reg replied. Run, yelled Vic, wearing a now rather forced enthusiastic beam. Don't get out. <laughs> on Monday at the gym, Reg did some slow sit-ups on a yoga mat by the window, feeling rather worn out by the whole cricket business. Morning, Reg, sang Andre, lying down on the rowing machine. How was your weekend? Reg sighed. 
lying back on the yoga mat and putting his hands behind his head. It was a lot, Andre, is what it was. Vic roped me and our sort of adopted niece into doing product placement at the cricket. Young Casey quite enjoyed most of it, but then she spat pineapple fritter at someone, sneezed everywhere and crawled about under the seats. And wouldn't you know, that's when the camera was on us. So now Vic's on TV looking sort of horrified and I'm there grinning like a twit. <laughs> the door to the studio opened. Andre whispered, peanut butter. And they both began vigorously exercising. Suddenly, Reg found himself being looked down upon from above by a rather cross-looking child. It was Casey. Casey, what are you doing here? Reg exclaimed, sitting up. Going to my swimming lesson. Yasmin on the desk said you were here, so I came to say thanks for taking me to the cricket. Casey continued to give Reg a challenging look. Reg sat up, a bit sheepishly, and Andre stopped rowing. Well, we're pleased we could help you get to do something you wanted, he replied carefully. Casey gave him a knowing look and headed back towards the door. When she got there, she turned back and looked at Reg and Andre sitting down on the exercise equipment. She pointed at them with one small accusing finger. That, she declared, is not sporting. <laughs> then she turned and went off towards the pool. It was very quiet in the fitness studio for a few moments. Juice, proposed Andre eventually. Yes, please, sighed Reg. Casey's butterfly plant cutting grew into a tall bee-filled bush in her gran's garden, which her gran loved very much. Casey found the plant less likable, sadly. The flowers always seemed to her to be the colour of pineapple fritters. <laughs> She never sought to go to a cricket game again, but she kept Florrie's directions to the tree that looked confused and drew a picture of the tree to go with it. She told Florrie that the directions were very good. It was the sporting thing to do. <laughs> As for her uncles, Reg and Vic, Casey now knew that they were not particularly sporting sorts in any sense of the term. They did, however, love a good scavenger hunt and they didn't stop you taking slips of plants. So on the whole, she thought, that was satisfactory. When she grew up, though, Casey had decided she would become a personal trainer. And when she was in charge of the fitness studio, there wouldn't be people using it as a cafe or as a place to find a date. They wouldn't be smuggling chocolate bars inside or taking up the machines by using them as chairs and beds. That simply wasn't on. It wasn't polite. It just wasn't sporting. <laughs> Yay! That was fun. Um, <laughs> I'm going to take these off now because, nice. like, like my characters, I really can't see very well. Oh. No. Yes. <laughs> Sorry, I was saying, what was the yellow plant? I was trying to guess if it was a choreo or something. Did you have a particular uh, plant, a sunset plant in mind? Yeah. Uh, a butterfly bush is like a... Uh, common name for a buddleia. A buddleia, okay. Um, if you look up it's butterfly bush, there. you'll get pictures of the sort of big bunches of very flowers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they come in lots of different colours. <laughs> oh, I've just seen a photo. I've definitely seen yeah, that. Yeah, you seen that before? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they, if you look them up, you'll have all seen butterfly bush before. There's a buddleia down yeah. the road. But it's not turned yellow. No. Yeah. No, they they're usually more commonly pink or yeah, somewhere yeah, in the yeah. pink and to purple sort of range, like magenta, um, through to sort of bluish purple um, and lighter pink. But there, I did find one that was sort of like a sunset, like an apricot pink going through oh, to lovely. sort of a yellow. So Beautiful. I, I oh. thought that was a fairly unusual colour for, for this plant. Also, I don't know whether anyone saw my ridiculous uh, little something that happened partway through that. And if not, Sarah, you'll probably see it when you no, come back to the recording. <laughs> yeah. I got, to up to get my, I got up to get my thread and I, because uh, I needed another piece of thread. So I found the thread and I put it down here 
And then I needed to get my jumper. So I went and got my jumper and I put it down on top of the thread. And then I wanted to put my jumper on. So I put my jumper on, which was very tricky for some reason. And then I went, oh, no, there's my thread. And then I realized it must be in my jumper. So then I was trying to take my jumper off and the thread fell in front of my face. And it was very ridiculous. So you'll get to enjoy that one. <laughs> uh, so any requests for our next story for July? Um, so 9th of July um, for the next one. What would we like? I think you have to have clothes wrestling, Emily. <laughs> clothes wrestling. All right. Yes, I, I, I have many experiences of that. <laughs> have, have you done before um, pets being on your lap and now you can't move? Forever? When you can't move. <laughs> uh, not specifically. No, we've done lots of stuff with pets, but not specifically that like the animal holding you in place thing. So, yeah, yeah I, I'm a prisoner now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no. What about people not reading adverts or instructions? You know, something really, really obvious, and then they ask you, "Oh, what about that?" And it's literally right there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Clear. There yes, was one. Of I have provided moments. a lot of instructions in in my time, and then people <laughs> do not follow them. And yes. I'm like, it was the first dot point. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I was thinking, what about, you know, when someone gets your name wrong and yep. you're too polite to say, that's not my name. <laughs> yeah. And then it goes on too long and you yeah. think they might figure it out and they don't figure it out. And then you just have to go by the wrong name and hope no one else that knows your name is the person <laughs> saying your name wrong. Yeah, it reminded me um, when we were talking about people seeing stuff on forms and just ignoring yeah. it. It's yeah, similar so. to that. Like it's, you know, it's written right there. Yeah, so <laughs> I've had the opposite experience where often people will call me Emma um, oh. instead of Emily, um, but they always, almost always are so embarrassed about it that I end up going too far the other way and being like, that's fine, that'll do. That's okay, close yeah. enough. Yeah. Emma's fine. <laughs> call me Emma if you want, that's okay. <laughs> Oh well, that would that would be a good extension of what Camilla suggests. You know, like when politeness gets into worse trouble. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah I recall true. having it happen when I've even been wearing a name tag. Yeah. yeah. Name tag says Barry Timmons, and the guy called me Brian the whole time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Brian. Give it yeah, Brian. Step. Brian will tell you. Brian knows about. It. One of the ladies I was working with. Uh, working recently she said we were talking about people forgetting names and she said her neighbor she called him Alan for the last 20 years until recently <laughs> she <gasps> met his daughter over the fence and she told him that his name was Martin <laughs> 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 Then there's the other thing of people having an unreasonable expectation of you remembering the name. If it's like when you've met them once, you met them like one time, or something you know, really brief, or, or in a great big crowd or whatever, mm. like you know, there's 100 people at a function and you know, you get introduced to 55 of them. Yeah, you're probably not going to remember them unless. Yeah, you've had a conversation with you know, like a sustained a long conversation. conversation. Well, the no, worst one is when you still don't, though, is it like, you know, you're at the function with 100 people and you're introduced to 50 of them and, you know, the 49th person you have a really good chat to and by yes. the end of the great chat you don't remember their name anymore and oh, then the 50th awful. person gets introduced and then you, afterwards you're thinking, well, I really liked that per 49th person that I met but I can't remember their name, uh, <laughs> so I don't know, how, like, how to <laughs> stay in touch with them. Oh, so really, you know, yeah. So you you can put in, um, you know, sneaky ways or attempts <laughs> to find out to the find name out of the name. that you forgot yeah. all the tricks we use, you know. So you get talking just briefly to the 50th person. You say, um, do you recall the name of the chat that um, has just walked away and is yeah. here at the bar or whatever? I've done... I've done a sneaky thing several times when I've been at a, like networking events with a friend um, where if we have sort of an arrangement where if you start talking to someone and you can't remember their name, you can get the other person over 
and they'll introduce themselves. Oh. Like, like your friend comes to over and says, oh, hey, again. I'm so and so, yeah. to get them to say their name again. Oh, that that one's worked quite a few sweet. times. Right. Yeah. The other thing I was going to say is, you know how sometimes people have a really obscure nickname and they just are that name, they're introduced as that name, it's maybe not even a name, it's like here's Egg or something yeah. like that and you and then you kind of go, how are they Egg? And no one actually can tell you. Yeah, <laughs> no one so knows funny. the origin of the nickname or, yeah, because yeah. they've all just been introduced to that person as Egg. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, yeah. Nicknames would be great. Yeah. All right. So, any non name related <laughs> requests? You got a whole story about name related stuff. Yeah. Well, we've got clothes <laughs> wrestling and being kept prisoner by a sleeping pet. Yeah. Um, <laughs> adverts. Oh, oh, no, we've got the politeness thing. Yeah. thing. We've got the politeness How about, thing. Um, politeness. Sorry. How about someone breaking out of a, a um, Prison or similar, escaping from somewhere. Like, okay. That seems like a fun thing. Like escaping that <laughs> prison? <laughs> and I think it'd be good to have something on unusual type junk foods that exist. Unusual junk foods, okay. Well, Chico rolls that don't have chicken in them. <laughs> Very Chico fun. They don't. Chicken? Oh, they're like weirdly named doesn't sound like sounds like it's referring to something and it isn't okay yeah weirdly weird named hmm. oh, they're, they're... <laughs> gumpet yeah. Yeah. Oh, God, gumpet you have to put gumpet in story what is that gumpet is going to be the name of my new dog gumpet she's a um um what is it it's a mapping of hikes, isn't it? GPS mapping. GPS mapping of hikes. It's called, was it Guttel? Guttel, yes. And they've changed it to far out. And Mark goes, what did it used to be? And I said, oh, I think it's starts with a G and it's Gumpet or something. Gumpet. <laughs> so that's oh. how it's like Gumpet. Yeah. Like invented <laughs> words. Good. It's a good. Um, Here's a good one. Speaking invented of invented words, words mum, mum this week has, every time we've been buying these crumpets, we've got this new, really good brand of gluten-free crumpets and we've been buying them and so we've been eating crumpets every day but every time mum goes to ask me to make some crumpets she says it wrong but a different wrong every time so she keeps <laughs> mixing it somehow with the word pumpkins so she's come up with pumpkins and and pumpkins and <laughs> pumpkins and <laughs> Maybe that's what a gumpet is Margaret. Yeah, a gumpet sounds like a uh I don't know, green pumpkin crumpet or something. Yeah, I reckon Charmaine could be there at midnight yeah, because she's too frightened to move the cat. The cat looks really big as well. It looks like a yeah, lynx is. is on you. Because like, yeah, the cat is closer to the camera. This cat's actually quite a small cat compared to... Yeah. Like, Compared to Squeaky, which is the other cat that Tegan has with the little white paws, mm-hmm. Squeaky's like a huge cat. Like Squeaky's probably oh. a similar size to Missy, whereas this is quite a smaller, fluffy this cat. Just the uh, camera angle. I think, yeah, it's a very long cat. <laughs> well, when you catch a fish, you hold it out the arm's length yeah. of the camera. Yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah. And the fish looks giant, you know. Still coming out now. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, we know what you've done, Mark. <laughs> Your fish that you caught was actually only this big. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Do a thing on um, camera angles and, and yeah. new effects there. Yeah. 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 Here's my giant, giant cup. Look how big it is. You've got to stand back there and put it like. You sit back, back a bit, Phil. Like a like glass this. of juice. It's a giant cup, see? <laughs> it's enormous. What about yeah. pano shots gone wrong? You know, when you do the panorama and you end up yeah. getting yourself in twice or there's a pet and they look like a massive sausage dog. <laughs> <it's> like, <laughs> yes. or, or it makes people feel sick watching it. This is <laughs> that motion sickness. I've oh. seen, oh. I've seen that bad. happen on... um. Google Street View before yes. where like the Google Street View car was going along and it took a photo of a dog but it took like three photos of the dog and the, <laughs> the dog, dog got like, stretched out <laughs> <laughs> yeah. hey. that's called a thing 
and doesn't sound like the thing it actually is. Yeah. I was thinking about shepherd's pie. Yes. Yes. My dad terrified me when I was a kid because <gasps> he said that when his mum used to make it, you could hear them screaming <laughs> in the kitchen. Oh, that's awful. <laughs> that's so awful. It's a very bad, bad joke. That's yeah. Nasty. And I think he thought I would be in on the joke, but I was too young. <laughs> so yeah. I didn't touch Shepherd's Aww. Pie for quite a while. <laughs> when jokes are terrifying. What about Toad yeah. in the Hole then? You would have loved that <laughs> one. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. Foodie, foodie things. Oh, uh, weirdly, yeah, like names. Ghost boy. <laughs> or things you convince people of when they're younger. I heard um, of a story where someone's mum told them that they were a mermaid and it was really important that every week they had an hour in the bath to sort oh, of like convince them to wash. Tail. Yes, <laughs> basically kid-free time and it was absolutely <laughs> yeah. deathly serious. And so the kids that were is... waiting so they became mermaids and took it very seriously. Oh, in that's fantastic. <laughs> well, well, Sarah, you should slip that in like... Um... <laughs> Parent inventions to yeah. wangle free time, you know, the length people will go to to get a bit of time on their own, you know. That's all in it. The usual. <laughs> get it. Get it. <laughs> it's so not we've got either. lots of good topics there for the next time. Um, right. That would be good fun. So July 9th for that one. Um, same time, I think. I don't think there's any daylight savings or anything going on in the meantime no. to get in our no. way. So um, same time as today. On July 9th um, for our next story. Uh, thank you for listening to this one. Okay. Bye. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> See ya. See ya.